Thank you for joining us for our continuing discussion. There's a substantial body of research addressing the potential infectious nature of certain cancers, and this is specifically related to cancers of the reproductive system. And so what has been found are viral particles, the genetic sequences that have homology with HIV. And we are talking about 90 to 95 percent uh, homology with respect to these cancers, these genetic sequences and HIV. Based upon the available research, it appears that there has been an awareness of this connection between microbes and cancers of the reproductive system for a very long time. We are going to be looking at an article from the 60s. Right now we are looking at the article from 1998. And what this article indicates is that prostate, breast, and gynecological cancer markers rack with homology to HIV-1. What the researchers are indicating is that they are seeing exhibited molecular, immunological, and genetic homology to HIV-1 proteins in these breast and gynecological cancers. They are also indicating that there is a strong belief that a retrovirus related to HIV may be associated with these reproductive system cancers. This is additional research by one of the same researchers. This is coming out in 2000 out of the University of Nebraska. And here the researchers just indicating again that these HIV type antigens have been found in both breast and prostate cancer and found specifically in 95% of ovarian, uterine, and cervical cancer cases. Additionally, they found that all cancer cases exhibited more than 90% homology to HIV GP41. And here they specifically indicate that the HIV-like segments of breast cancer DNA exhibited approximately 90% homology to HIV-1 and that prostate cancer sequences exhibited almost 95% homology to HIV-1. Now we're going to switch and look at some research from 1971. This earlier research gives a bit of a theoretical background. And so there were postulations made earlier that there was a virus implicated in these cancers, but they were not quite sure what virus might be implicated. And so at this time they noted, this was in 71, that some human milk contained these particles that were similar to the mouse mammary tumor virus. And now let's look at this research from 1968. These researchers from 1968 uh, writing in the Journal of the National Cancer Institute indicated that there were small virus-like particles observed in human breast cancer. While there were small virus-like particles noted in what was considered normal breast tissue, in tissue that was not normal, what they found was a substantial increase in these virus-like particles. Let's look at some additional research from 1998. This 1998 article is available through the U.S. National Library of Medicine site. This article is addressing specifically the human immunodeficiency virus type 1 like DNA sequences with respect to breast cancer. These researchers are also identifying this correlation and they are indicating that there is a molecular and immunological similarity between these proteins for HIV-1 and what they are finding in 95% of breast and gynecological cancers and also in prostate cancer cases. And so what they are indicating is that the HIV virus or something very similar to it uh, has been the long postulated breast cancer virus. 
What they are indicating is that breast cancer impacts about one out of every eight to 10 women in the United States. They also indicate something interesting because it's also related to groups of people who have that CCR5 mutation. And what they indicate is that about 10% of breast cancer patients also exhibit a genetic inheritance pattern. And here the researchers are indicating that you have a number of cancers that have been correlated with a number of microbes. And so they go on to indicate that these retrovirus dynamics in human cancer have been underestimated for a very long time. And these researchers are just visiting that issue of the mouse mammary tumor virus and the similarities between that and the human DNA sequences. And this illustration allows you to look at the tissue or the cells that were tested and also what was found over on the right hand side. And this is a similar illustration. And basically what this is addressing is the PCR amplification of breast cancer DNA with the HIV-1 derived primers. And these are some particle depictions. And here you have the arrows pointing to additional particle depictions. And here these researchers get very specific. What they indicate is that the results that they have found from their data suggest that a cancer antigen is encoded by the gene related to HIV-1 and it is critical for the growth of both breast cancer and cervical cancer. And here the researchers indicate that the breast cancer DNA fragment that was amplified was not distinguishable from that of the HIV-1 fragment that was amplified. They go on to indicate that they do not believe that the similarity between the cancer and the HIV-1 proteins are accidental. They also offer that they are not clear completely about how this came about. The authors also reference the fact that there have been many investigators looking at this viral etiology of human breast cancer. And so this research has been going on for quite a while and the hypothesis has been there for quite a while. However, it hasn't been a part of regular public discourse. As we wrap this up, one of the most important things to come out of this very long body of research is the awareness that there needs to be a new approach to cancer diagnosis, cancer prevention, prognosis, and therapy. And so if you've got a microbial dynamic that is going on, the approach needs to address the microbial dynamic. Remember, knowledge is power. Take care. See you soon.